I'm PJ Stevis, Design Director on Rise. I'm here to, yeah, show off some of our single player campaign and talk about the game. Let's start by talking about how this game has progressed since it was first unveiled before earlier this year. Sure, yeah, so I mean, uh, we came to E3 and we were, we've been working on the game. We didn't have everything finished yet, so we had to kind of go to the show with what we had, but I mean, we've progressed a lot since E3, obviously. Our combat system has a lot more depth than it did uh, at that time. And also kind of our story came together, so we really have, you know, this fantastic story-based action adventure to show you now, so. Can you talk a little bit about that combat experience and how it has progressed? Yeah, so I mean, it was always the plan, uh, even going into E3, that we were gonna build towards this kind of real fluid dynamic combat system. Our AI, you know, they swarm you together, they fight together, but then the player has kind of total creative freedom with the moves he does. All of our attacks and, you know, blocks and deflects, they all move in and out of each other. So, I mean, Rise Combat is really about the depth and fluidity of your actions and how you kind of deal with every combat encounter differently. So. Yeah, there's a lot of different upgrades and uh, elements like that. Can you walk us through some of those elements? Yeah, so um, one of the, the main upgrade and like the heartbeat of the game is our executions, right? So uh, basically, as you kind of go and progress through the game, you'll get you know more kind of experience. And with that XP, you can buy executions. And each execution will give you kind of a new perk upgrade that you can play with and use dynamically. So I think when you guys play the game, you'll see that we have four. There's like damage, focus, uh, health, and XP, which gives you an XP boost. So the idea is that you know one of the core loops, you play the game, you get executions. When you choose one of these perks, based on the execution in this timing game, you get more or less rewards for that perks. So if I kind of, I go through, I get an execution, and I select damage, and I get like recruit, which is our lowest level kind of perk reward, um, you get like, you know, let's say, you know, X amount of uh, damage, like upgrade on your next hit. But if I get like legendary, which is the best timing, then I get like, let's say, you know, X amount of damage plus 30%. So the idea is that you know, once you're caught in this loop, this is kind of your core thing to play around with outside of you know, your main combat experience. And once you unlock these executions, they're shared between single player and our gladiator mode. So the idea is that you know, I play through single player campaign, I unlock a ton of these executions, I can go you know, online and play you know, uh, through Xbox Live and then bam, I have all these executions. I don't start from you know, ground zero and stuff. So. Talk a little about the gladiator mode and how that will tie in to what you just explained. So I mean, single player, is really about the story of, of Marius Titus and his kind of ascension from being a legionnaire into like a general of Rome. And it's definitely about his story. But we said, okay, with our gladiator mode, we wanted to make it about you and your character. So I create my own gladiator, I upgrade him, and I choose the armor configurations that I have, and then I play co-op with a buddy. And the whole experience has been tailored towards like, it's me and a buddy having this co-op combat experience. And then we have this shifting tile set where you see the kind of dynamically moving environments and challenges. And you know, it's it's really kind of single player is definitely for like you know the action adventure gamer that wants a really kind of well told story. But then if you just want to go online and have fun with a buddy, you have that experience as well. So when it comes to Xbox One, what has that opened up from you guys from a development standpoint, and what you can do for the single player experience? Well, I mean, like kind of it's this three prong, right? Like the box is more powerful than it was last generation, so we can push like way higher fidelity graphics, you know, better lighting you know, full facial performance capture on in cinematics and in gameplay. And then, you know, of course we have Kinect. And, you know, I think one of the things people will find is our use of Kinect using, you know, your voice to command troops and being this general. It really it really just feels good. It's no nonsense. And then of course the, the new controller, I mean, like I'm a huge fan of the new controller. The new trigger buttons are like buttery smooth. And we actually, you know, uh, we had uh, executions on our face buttons before if you played any previous builds and stuff like that. But now we have it on the trigger. And it's just because the trigger feels like so amazing. And then we've got, you know, obviously the haptic feedback stuff with this new kind of really high fidelity rumble. And I mean, having, uh, you know, been there as we're tuning that, I mean, it really, it, I, I can't explain it until you actually held the controller. It just feels way better than, uh, you know, last, like last generation. I mean, when I play, when I play uh, something on 360 and I feel it, it feels mushy. You know, now everything feels very, very tight and responsive and very kind of, tailored towards the action you're doing in the game, so yeah. And speaking of the action in the game, can you walk us through some of the different environments people are gonna be playing through that you guys are showing here? Yeah, so um, the main thing we're showing is kind of, uh, we'll be showing three missions, and one of them you know, takes place in kind of, you know, sort of the, the Roman, you know, uh, like the kind of height of the Roman Empire, which is the Palace of Nero. And it's like everything is very, very kind of overblown, and it's very, you know, gaudy and stuff like that. So you get all these kind of, you know, 
really like, you know, beautiful marble. You get a lot of gold trim and stuff like that. And then we kind of take you, you know, something a little bit more natural as you go deeper into Britannia. And then I don't want to you know, give any spoilers away, but then we kind of take you into this really kind of, you know, uh, strange and twisted forest and stuff like that. But the general idea is that, you know, throughout the whole entire campaign, it is an action adventure. We wanted this feeling that you know, every mission matched to the element of the story, the phase that Marius was in in his life. So, I mean, uh, you can definitely experience, uh, definitely you know, expect to have a very tailored experience and very, like, varied missions uh, throughout the game.